Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury, I'm JRH and today I'm looking at the Diana Model 1 Air Rifle. Diana Model 1. Uh, it's an interesting old rifle. Uh, it's probably the oldest gun featured on the Air Armoury so far. Uh, there are three versions of the Model 1 um, and to put them into context if you're not aware of the history of Diana be sure to watch the uh, beginning of my video on the original Model 50 where I explain it. So the three versions. Uh, the first one was branded as Diana made in Germany by Meyer and Grammelspacher between 1913 to 1940. Uh, and then the other two versions are post-war versions. Uh, one was branded as Diana but made by Milbro in Scotland after they bought the Diana trademark and that one was made between 1949 and 1959 and then the third version was branded as original uh, but was again made in Germany by Meyer and Grammelspacher uh, throughout the 50s and into the 60s. Now let's take a closer look on the bench. This gun is a Diana branded version, which can clearly be seen from the Diana logo on the side there and the Diana Huntress logo on the top there, above the Model 1 marking, which you can hopefully see there. And I know that this is one of the earlier Maya and Grummel Spucker made Dianas, as it has Made in Germany stamped on the top there. Uh, the Milbro made Dianas had Made in Great Britain stamp there and the later original branded guns had the original logo and model number here but was stamped uh, Made in West Germany underneath there. Now I think this gun was probably made in the 20s or 30s. Uh, on the end of the stock it does say 1236. Now I'm not sure if that's a date or not but if it is, it indicates it was made in December 1936. Um, even for its age, it's not in great condition. Uh, there's a lot of rust on it. Now, this isn't actually my gun. I've just borrowed it to do the video. So I'm going to resist the temptation to clean it up, uh, which I would do if it was mine. Uh, as you can see, it's not a large gun. It's only 31 inches or 79 centimetres long, and it weighs just two pounds. And in fact, the Blue Book of Air Guns here actually lists it as the Model 1 Junior. It's a brake barrel spring piston rifle, as you can see there. However, it isn't loaded in the conventional brake barrel manner. Uh, instead of putting a pellet into the end of the barrel here, what you actually do is twist the end of the barrel here to unlock it, and then you actually remove the barrel. Uh, you can then insert a pellet into the end here, reinsert it, and then twist it to lock it back into place. So pretty interesting mechanism and I'll move the camera so that I can demonstrate it properly. I have here a reproduction of the instruction sheet for the Milbro made Model 1, um, which gives the loading instructions. The gun is cocked by breakdown action. Hold the stock in the right hand and push the barrel downwards with the left until the trigger is engaged and then return to normal position. Now withdraw the pellet tube from the muzzle of the gun by giving it a half turn to the left and withdrawing. The ammunition should then be inserted into the breech of the pellet tube. Replace the pellet tube and make sure it is pressed firmly home and lock in position by turning to the right. Now the reason I read that out is I wanted to show you the way that you're supposed to load it, although I don't know if that's actually the best order to do it, and I'll come to that in a moment. So first of all, break the barrel until the trigger's engaged, and then return to the normal position. Twist the end and withdraw the pellet tube. Now put the pellet into the end of the pellet tube. Sometimes needs a bit of bang on the table just to seat it properly. Now this is a bit I'm not too sure about. 
Uh, the Model 1 doesn't have a safety, yet I'm supposed to insert the loaded pellet tube into the end of a cocked gun and then have my hand uh, round the muzzle playing around trying to twist it to lock it into place. It just doesn't seem very safe. So I will do it this once um, very carefully but for the rest of the video I think I'm going to insert the loaded pellet tube first and then cock the gun whilst it's pointing in a safe direction. Now loaded, ready to fire. So in all honesty, it's a bit of a faff to fire uh, and to load, but there's something almost quite fun about it. Uh, the amount of time and preparation that goes into each shot. It must be like the air gun equivalent of loading an old muzzle loading black powder musket or something. Looking at the barrel itself, it's only eight and a half inches or 21 and a half centimetres long and it looks like it's made of brass. The uh, blue book of air guns here says that it's a rifled barrel. I don't know how well you can see on the camera there, it is clearly a smooth bore. Now I did read somewhere as well that if you ever lost that barrel you could just put corks into the end and turn it into a cork gun. Now this gun is made of tin plate construction although I think you could also get a nickel plated version and it's just got this small wooden stock at the back. Now as it's got no uh, forend it means you have to hold the thin compression chamber there and that combined with the small size make it feel very dainty to shoot. It has a single stage non adjustable trigger but uh, it feels surprisingly smooth and it's actually probably my favourite part of the gun. In terms of sights it has very basic non adjustable open sights a uh, simple post at the front there and a notch at the back to line it up with. Now that notch is quite large and curves away which means you get a nice clear sight picture but as it's quite big I find it gives too much room for error. I wasn't sure what ammunition to use in this gun as I've not had a lot of experience with smoothbore air guns. Uh, I initially thought to use lead balls and the blue book of air guns does here say to use darts or balls. So I have here a tin of 8.18 grain Gamos lead balls. Uh, that Milbro instruction sheet I showed you earlier on however states that uh, we recommend Milbro hollow slugs and darts. And over here about the hollow slugs it does say these slugs are especially suitable for smoothbore air guns available in boxes containing 100, 200 or 500. And I do have here an original box of 100 of those Milbro hollow slugs for Diana and other smoothbore air guns and pistols. See there? Um, I've been shooting the gun a bit before making the video um, and I found that the lead balls work best as they are most accurate and I found a lot easier to load than the hollow slugs. So I'm going to be using those lead balls for my tests in a minute. Now incidentally I did also try some regular Diablo style pellets just to see if they would shoot straight or whether they would keyhole the target by turning in the air as they weren't spinning from rifling. But that would have been the least of my worries as I couldn't actually get them to work. Um, I couldn't seat them properly and they just didn't fire. Now I tried a number of different types but had the same problem with all of them. Uh, there was one, I think it was these old BSA pylon pellets that I did manage to fire a handful of but most of them didn't fire either. I'm now going to test the accuracy. I'm going to fire 10 shots at one of these 14 centimetre square targets at a range of 9 or 10 metres using those 8.18 grain gamma lead balls. Now from what I've found with this rifle uh, when I was using it before the video is it shoots slightly high, slightly to the right and apparently never in the same place twice. So I'd be more than happy if I just get all 10 shots on the target.
So here I have the target. I actually lost track of how many shots I'd fired, so I ended up firing 11 in the end. Now as you can see it's not super accurate as the general group here is quite large, but that being said at least there is some kind of recognisable group. There was only a couple of um, really bad strays. Now when I was testing the gun before making the video I found that at a distance of even just a metre or two more the accuracy decreases quite dramatically even further. Now moving on to the power, I've got my chronograph set up and I will test the power but without testing it I can tell you that it's not very powerful at all. Uh, there's a distinct audible gap between the gun being fired and the lead balls hitting the target and on occasion you can actually see those lead balls in flight. And like with the accuracy test, I'm intending to fire 10 of these Gamo lead balls. Here I have my chronograph test sheet. Now I've already done all of my calculations. Uh, it averaged just 169.34 feet per second with a range of 26.6 feet per second. And that equates to a power of only 0.52 foot pounds, which is very low indeed. Uh, the UK maximum legal limit for a rifle being 12 foot pounds, of course. Now I doubt the Model 1 would have been hugely powerful uh, even when it was new, but it must have been more than that and in all honesty it probably would have been more powerful to just use the removable barrel as a peak shooter. So there you've seen the Diana Model 1. Now although it's not very powerful or accurate uh, it's definitely an interesting little gun and I've genuinely enjoyed shooting it so I'm pleased I managed to get my hands on it uh, to make a video on it. Uh, that being said though I won't be rushing out to buy one. Uh, with that low power and accuracy, I just don't think it's got enough practical application as an everyday shooter and recently I've tried to move away from just collecting guns that I'm not going to use regularly and I think this is probably more of a collector's gun. Uh, if you, however, are going to be rushing out to get one after watching this video, you won't actually have to part with much money for one. Uh, Blue Book of Air Guns here says that uh, their value is between $15 and $75 depending on condition. Uh, in real terms though, I've done a bit of research on the internet and in the UK you can expect to pay around £85 for one in mint condition but as little as £15 or £20 in one in condition like this. So, thanks for watching, uh, subscribe to the Air Armoury channel if you like the video and until next time, keep your arms in the air.